Professor Dave and Chegg here. We are discussing some ways to prepare alcohols, and there is one extremely important reaction that must be mentioned. That is the Grignard reaction, and it allows us to prepare alcohols from carbonyl-containing compounds. Let's get a closer look at this reaction now. Beyond generating alcohols, the Grignard reaction is an excellent way to form new carbon-carbon bonds. And to understand how this occurs, let's look at how Grignard reagents form. Here we have a primary alkyl bromide. We will allow this to react with elemental magnesium in diethyl ether solvent. We must make note that Grignard reagents must be prepared in strictly anhydrous conditions. There can be no water in solution, not even a trace amount. What happens is that by some inorganic chemistry that is beyond the scope of this tutorial, a magnesium atom will insert itself in this carbon-bromine bond, which produces a Grignard reagent. So now we have CMGBr, and this will do something quite interesting. Whereas a carbon-halogen bond is polar, with the bond dipole pointing towards the more electronegative halogen, because this carbon is now bound to magnesium, which is less electronegative than carbon, this will invert the polarity of this bond. Whereas a carbon that is bound to a halogen will bear a partial positive charge, a carbon that is bound to magnesium will bear a partial negative charge. That makes this Grignard reagent a source of nucleophilic carbon. This carbon can attack some electrophile, and in fact, it will tend to react with carbonyl-containing compounds. We can react this with an aldehyde or ketone, so let's see what that looks like. Say we have this propyl Grignard reagent reacting with this two-carbon aldehyde. The carbon bound to magnesium will do the attacking, so let's draw an arrow from there, landing on the carbonyl carbon, which is the electrophile because of the polarity of the carbonyl. This pi bond gets kicked up onto the oxygen, and we are left with this oxyanion, with MgBr plus hanging out nearby, making an electrostatic interaction. We now have a larger molecule as we have formed this new carbon-carbon bond. Once this transformation is complete, we are safe to perform aqueous acidic workup. The oxyanion will protonate, and we get this alcohol product. So the key thing to understand is that if a Grignard reagent reacts with an aldehyde or ketone, we will get an alcohol. So given some reagents like this Grignard reagent and this ketone, all we have to do is make a new carbon-carbon bond between the carbon that bears the magnesium and the carbonyl carbon and change the carbonyl into a hydroxyl group. That will be our product. Make sure that your product contains the same number of carbons as are present in the two reagents combined, as we will not be losing or gaining any carbon atoms in this reaction. Grignard reagents can also react with a few other substrates, such as ester substrates, but there will be a slight difference. Say this Grignard reagent attacks this ester. The pi bond gets kicked up here, but because of this alkoxy group, the carbonyl can reform and kick off the alkoxy group, and we get this ketone. Because there are more Grignard reagents in solution, and they can attack ketones, another one will attack the carbonyl at the same location, and this time we can protonate the oxyanion. So we ended up adding two alkyl fragments to the same carbon, and this will be our product, which will again be an alcohol. We can also have a Grignard reagent react with carbon dioxide, and here, once the oxyanion protonates, we will actually be left with a carboxylic acid. So that is a slight twist on the standard Grignard reaction. Grignard reagents can't react with any substrate that has an even remotely acidic proton, however, as that will simply protonate the Grignard reagent so it will not be able to coordinate. This means that carboxylic acids, alcohols, Amines and thiols are not suitable substrates for this reaction. So that covers the basics regarding the Grignard reaction. We should be able to look at a Grignard reagent and a substrate and draw the product that will result. Similarly, we ought to be able to look at some secondary or tertiary alcohol and understand what reagents could have been used to generate it. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.